In the last video, we learned and implemented basic flight physics. However, there are several systems shown in part 1 that I didn't explain, like animated control surfaces and a minimal heads-up display. I added these because it gives useful feedback for the developer and player. In this video, I'll explain the animation and HUD systems in detail. Since the aerodynamic forces working on the plane are all faked, the position of the graphical elements don't matter. We can simply move them in a way that looks good without worrying about physics. The animation code is then very simple. The roll, pitch, and yaw inputs the player controls have the range negative 1 to 1. We take the control input and multiply it by some angle, for example 25 degrees. When the player pitches up, the elevators rotate. When the player releases the stick, the elevators return to their neutral position, and so on for the other control surfaces. But we can't base the animation on the player's input alone. Remember that the calculate steering function translates the player's input into torque, and that the G limiter reduces the turn rate at high speed. We need to account for these when animating the control surfaces. So we add a new variable, effective input. When the G limiter reduces player input by half, effective input is reduced by half. We also add a correction input. This accounts for the calculate steering function, which acts like a fly-by-wire system. When the player releases input, the plane automatically applies the amount of torque needed to stop rotation. By adding this to effective input, our animation can show this effect. The player can change their input pretty much instantly, so we want to limit how fast the control surfaces move. We have one more variable, deflection, which simply moves towards effective input at a limited speed. This deflection variable is multiplied by the maximum deflection for that control surface. The air brake is animated when the player holds the button to reduce throttle. Finally, afterburners are animated by changing their scale. Under 75% throttle, the afterburner graphics are disabled. Above that, the afterburners increase in size until the throttle reaches 100%. It's crucial for the player to move their camera during dogfights. The enemy plane will not always be directly in front of the player. They need to be able to follow the enemy as both are moving and turning. I chose to use an Ace Combat style camera. The player can look around using the right stick. Moving the stick all the way to one side will turn the camera in that direction. Holding the stick in any position will hold the camera steady. When the player releases the stick, the camera returns to the forward rotation. Look input is the player's input on the right stick. Look angle is a pair of angles that define the limit of rotation on the X and Y axis separately. For example, this value means the player can look up to 170 degrees to the left or right and up to 90 degrees up or down. These two values are multiplied to find the desired rotation for the camera. Camera offset determines how far behind the plane the camera is positioned. For example, this means the camera is 6 meters above and 20 meters behind the plane. This keeps the plane located in the bottom of the screen, so the plane is visible but not blocking the center. However, I don't use the player's input to directly rotate the camera. Instead, I smooth the input using an exponential moving average or EMA. Without the EMA, a player could release the stick and the camera would snap back to the center position in a single frame, which is jarring and disorienting. With an EMA, the camera will smoothly ease back into the center position. An EMA is implemented like this. Target is the value we are trying to reach. Average is the result of the EMA. This value is stored between frames. Alpha controls how strong the EMA smoothing is. One side of the sum is multiplied by 1 minus alpha, and the other is multiplied by alpha. If alpha is chosen to be 0.5, then the new value will have 50% influence from the previous value, and 50% influence from the target value. In other words, it'll move 50% closer to the target each frame. If alpha is 1, then the previous value has 0% influence and the target value has 100%. This will cause the average to snap to exactly the target value each frame. So an alpha value of 1 is equivalent to no smoothing, and any value less than 1 will apply smoothing that takes longer to reach the target value. Here is how an EMA is added to the camera code. We use look average instead of look input to construct the camera rotation. Finally, there's one more thing that moves the camera. When the plane turns, the camera should also turn by a small amount. If the player rolls right, the camera should roll left to appear like the camera is lagging behind the plane. This is accomplished by taking the plane's current angular velocity and using that to rotate the camera. This rotation is smoothed by another EMA. Another important element is the heads-up display or HUD. If you've ever played a combat flight game, you've probably seen a HUD that looks like this. 
These are of course based on real fighter jet HUDs. All of these symbols have a specific meaning and convey important information to the pilot. We're going to learn what they mean and then implement the HUD. A pilot in a dogfight might pull all kinds of complex maneuvers, turning in every direction as they chase the enemy. All of that turning can disorient the pilot. So the HUD for the plane should contain information about the plane's position and orientation in the world. The pilot should be able to understand this information at a glance. A lot of video games have a compass that tell the player which direction they're facing, but that only covers one axis of rotation, yaw. A pilot needs to know about roll and pitch as well. Real-world fighter jet HUDs use a pitch ladder for this purpose. A pitch ladder is essentially a compass that is oriented vertically instead of horizontally. The tick marks tell you how far above or below the horizon your nose is pointing. The pitch ladder is then rotated to match the world's vertical axis, so if the pilot rolls 30 degrees to the right, the pitch ladder rolls 30 degrees to the left. This will tell you how far you are rolled to one side, although it doesn't give you precise numbers. This allows us to see the plane's roll even when it's too dark to see the outside world. There needs to be an indicator that tells the player where exactly on the pitch ladder their nose is pointing. This indicator is called the bore sight. The bore sight will stay fixed in the center of the HUD while the pitch ladder rotates around it. Another indicator is needed to show what direction the plane is moving. Recall from part 1 that a plane does not always fly exactly in the direction it is facing. If it has a positive AOA, then the nose is pointing slightly above the direction of travel. This is shown by the velocity vector indicator. At the horizon is a long green line. This symbol on the horizon line is the velocity vector. Since the plane is flying level, the velocity vector is on the horizon. Since the bore sight is just below the 5 degree mark on the pitch ladder, we know that the plane's AOA is about 5 degrees. We can tell from the HUD that the nose is pointing slightly above the horizon, and that the plane is facing compass heading 168. Since the markers on the pitch ladder are level, we know that the plane has zero roll. Some parts of the HUD are trivial to add. They show important information, but they never need to move. We can show these just by placing UI elements normally. Altitude is the plane's height, which is just the y-axis of the position. Speed is the plane's forward speed from local velocity. The AOA and G meters read from the appropriate properties on the plane. The throttle bar shows the current throttle setting. Other elements depend on which direction the player is looking. The bore sight is supposed to show the direction the plane is facing, so if the player rotates the camera to the side, the bore sight should move in the opposite direction. Unity provides an API to handle this. We can use the method camera.world to screen point to position the bore sight. We choose a position some distance in front of the plane in world space and call this function to find the position on the HUD in screen space. The world space position is constructed from the plane's forward vector added to the camera's position. If we constructed the world space position using the plane's position instead of the camera, then the bore sight would appear to be a finite distance in front of the plane. This would cause a parallax effect. You can lessen the effect by placing the indicator further along the plane's forward direction, but using the camera's position avoids it entirely. Now, as the player looks around, the bore sight will show which direction is forward. We calculate the velocity indicator the same way, using the direction of the plane's velocity added to the camera's position. The compass and pitch ladder are more complicated to implement. The markings on them should match with the actual angle they represent. The horizon line should always be shown on the horizon. The 5 degree line should appear 5 degrees above the horizon, and so on. You might naively expect a linear relationship between angle and pixel size but this is not the case due to the projection matrix used by Unity's camera. The projection matrix introduces distortion that we have to account for when drawing the HUD. The distortion is always present, but is more noticeable at a higher FOV. If you've ever looked at a camera object in Unity, you would have noticed this pyramid-shaped wireframe attached to it. This is the view frustum of the camera. Anything inside of this volume will be rendered to the screen. The shape of the view frustum gives a clue as to why distortion occurs. Let's consider this from above to simplify things. Notice the far plane is a plane, it's completely flat. Compare this to the slice of a circle that covers the same angle as the camera. You can see that the round edge of the slice intersects the far plane only at the exact center. As we get further from the center, the slice gets increasingly further from the far plane. If we were to flatten the edge of the slice so that it stayed the same length but became a straight line, we can visualize the distortion. For small FOVs, the distortion isn't noticeable. As the FOV of the camera increases, the distortion becomes larger and larger. If we ignored distortion and placed HUD elements naively, the elements would become more inaccurate as they get further from the center. The distortion approaches infinity as the angle approaches 180 degrees. This is a fundamental limitation of camera projection in 3D games. 
any 3D game engine will have this effect. We can calculate distortion using the tangent function. I won't explain why this function matches since I don't actually understand, but this means we can correctly place elements on the HUD by using the tangent function to account for distortion. Here is the code to calculate pixel offsets based on angle, accounting for distortion. We calculate the distortion at our desired angle with the tangent of the angle. We divide that by the maximum possible distortion at the edge of the screen, tangent of FOV over 2. This is then multiplied by the size of the screen in pixels. We divide the FOV and the screen size by 2 since 0 degrees is in the center of the screen. We calculate the x and y axes of the position independently. The math for distortion is the same for both axes, so we use the vertical FOV and vertical screen size even when calculating the x-axis. Using this function, we can then place markers on the compass and pitch ladder. The pitch of the plane tells us where the horizon should be. Then each marker is set 5 degrees off of that. The compass is likewise based on the yaw of the plane. The boresight tells us the nose is pointing below the horizon. The pitch ladder tells us the plane is rolled slightly. The pitch ladder rolls in the opposite direction of the plane. That keeps the horizon line level with the real horizon. The pitch ladder tells the player their roll and pitch and makes it easier to orient themselves during a dogfight. Now when the player looks around, the HUD elements will constantly change so that the information they show is accurate. The HUD elements will be placed correctly no matter how the camera zooms or rotates. Now that we have a HUD, the player can see all of the info they need to fly the plane. The airspeed, altitude, and pitch ladder are particularly important for managing energy. The progress up to here is covered by the tag Part 2 in the GitHub repo. The next part will cover weapons and AI. Thanks for watching. If you're wondering why it took 4 months to make this video, let's just say that I've spent a lot of time studying flight mechanics. Your jetpack.